Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Fire breaks out at an apartment complex on the city's north side. The latest coming up. And details on a shooting at a popular resort area near Cancun that sent tourists scrambling for cover. And outside with live cam, the clouds are gone. It's really cooled off out there. 40s in many parts of our area. How much lower could it go this morning? Mike is standing by with more. Congratulations, everybody. You made it to Friday. It is November 5th. Yay, we made it to Friday, and it's a nice cold Friday once again. It is very chilly out there. Mike is here with more on the forecast, and Hill Country usually gets the lion's share of the cold temperatures these kinds of mornings. Well, there are some colder ones in the Hill Country, but what's interesting, the further west you go, the warmer it is, because really? there's more of a cloud blanket out to the west. Okay. Yeah, so that holds the heat. I mean, just like, you know, laying in bed, you don't have any blankets on, you get really cold, and that's the situation here in town, and temperature right now stands at 44 degrees, 39, hello to Bernie stage 37, one of the cold spots just up uh, I 10 right there and that 44 is the coldest we have seen since way back about oh, toward the end of March and that's on the heels of yesterday being the coldest afternoon high temperature since way back about the middle of February and we're not going to go that much lower because look where the dew point is at 42 so you can't drop down below what the dew point temperature is but still it's cold enough out there uh, maybe just a, a hint of fog here or there just kind of be on the lookout for that mold is on the low side this morning and and uh, temperatures, yeah, bundle up. It is cloudy skies to the west, a little milder there. Clear skies to the east, 44 degrees this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then a beautiful day today. We're going to gain a good 20, close to 25 degrees throughout the course of the day. 66, oh my goodness. But it's going to cool off again very quickly once the sun goes down. So if you're going to any football games tonight, Boy, make sure you take a jacket and a blanket, big thermos of hot chocolate, 60 right around kickoff and 56 at halftime. It is going to be a fantastic weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos is here this morning and already some big problems on the roads. That's right, Mike. I wish we had something better to talk about for a Friday, but here off 35 at Walsham, it's not looking good. Let's take a closer look from the shot at Transguide. Obviously, it looks like 35. A portion of that area looks like it's closed off right now, and we're seeing traffic building right along those frontage road lanes. Now, if you take a closer look there from this shot, we can see what looks like a crash scene, and we're learning that this is actually a deadly crash that happened a little bit earlier this morning. Now, while we're still waiting for info, our Jonathan Gotha will be live there on the ground in just a moment. But let's go ahead and talk about how that's looking on the map right now. Uh, we are seeing some yellow building up there, a little bit in the northbound lanes of 35, where the road is blocked from Eisenhower to Walsham Road due to that crash. So obviously, this is going to be a while. Traffic investigators are on the scene right now, so it could be a little while uh, for that tra that scene to clear up. But let's take a wider look because if even if you're coming in from 35, uh, from New Braunfels, that is, you're going to want to avoid 35 maybe take 1604 this morning because again it's unclear how long first responders are going to be out there this morning and it does look like we have a few more crashes that just popped up along US 90 and loop 410. We'll take a look at that in just a moment but again right now this is the big scene this morning. Let's head over to Jonathan Cotto who's live there on the ground. Jonathan how is traffic looking from your Good morning, Stephen. Well, the congestion is definitely building up here. I'm located between, I'm located off of I-35 between Walsham and Eisenhower. And as you can see here, the traffic is already starting to pile up, slow down. The crash taking place here right behind me. It's a little bit hard to see, but this is what we know so far. Police say the crash happened shortly after 3 a.m. A male driver traveling northbound on I-35 crashed into the back of a cage trailer. We're told the EMS performed CPR, but life-saving efforts were not successful. Now, information is limited, Stephen, here, but the cause of the crash remains under investigation. We'll remain on scene and bring you updates as more information is made available. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. A large response to an apartment fire late last night. This was on McCarty near Blanco on the city's north side. Firefighters say when they got there, they saw a fire coming from some of the windows in one of the units. None of the residents were injured. The cause of the fire is still not clear. Crews say at least one unit was heavily damaged and there was also some damage to nearby units. We're told power is not turned on in those units, so residents were sent to the Red Cross if they needed assistance. Today marks the fourth anniversary of the deadly shooting at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. November 5th, 2017, 26 people were killed, 20 others hurt when a gunman opened fire during a Sunday church service. Among the dead, an unborn child. It was the deadliest shooting at an American place of worship in modern history. 
The gunman, Devin Patrick Kelly of New Braunfels, was chased from the scene and ultimately died from a combination of return fire and a self-inflicted gunshot wound. U.S. Air Force has been dealt most of the blame. Kelly had served nearly five years in the Air Force before being discharged in 2014 for bad conduct. Recently, a federal judge ruled the shooting likely would not have happened had the Air Force put critical information about Kelly's past in the FBI database. Since the shooting, the church and the community have courageously moved forward and consistently embraced the phrase, evil did not win. And now to that deadly attack near a popular resort packed with Americans near Cancun, Mexico. Two people were killed when gunfire erupted on the beach, sending tourists running for their lives. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details. New video this morning of tourists scrambling to safety at this popular resort in Cancun, Mexico, after a gunfight broke out on the beach. This is the pool that I was in when we heard the gunshots about 2.15 today. Guests at the Hyatt Ziva Riviera Cancun Resort were told to shelter in place after hearing multiple gunshots. This picture showing how one person barricaded their door. Guests were finally told they were safe after taking cover for more than one hour. We are all safe at this time. They just directed all of us to uh, go to our rooms and they would help us get into our room because so many people had left keys and so forth on the beach or in, their, uh, in the pool when they uh, ran for safety. Mexican authorities say a group of armed men opened fire at the beach outside the hotel in what they describe as a confrontation between drug dealers. According to local news outlets, men armed with long guns came to the beach by boat, rushing the rival gang amid a sea of panicking tourists. Authorities say two suspected gun members died before the suspects took off in a stolen boat. One tourist was reportedly treated for a minor injury after being hit with a gun. This morning, the U.S. State Department Department says it's closely following the reports to determine if any American citizens were affected. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Tens of millions of Americans who work at companies with 100 or more employees will need to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by January 4th or get tested for the virus weekly under new government rules. New requirements are the Biden administration's boldest move yet to persuade reluctant Americans to get vaccinated. Republican state officials reacted with swift rebukes to the new mandate, threatening a wave of lawsuits and other actions. A growing roster of GOP governors and attorneys general also say more lawsuits are on the way. Today, the U.S. House is expected to vote on two major pillars of President Joe Biden's agenda. A senior Democratic aide says House members will now vote on both a sweeping social safety net plan along with the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Party leaders are trying to lock down votes for the economic and climate package. However, several provisions are still being hammered out as some Democrats want to delay a vote until a Congressional Budget Office review comes in. Timelines for passage of the infrastructure bill have already been pushed back twice. The U.S. Justice Department suing the state of Texas over its new voting restrictions. The Justice Department says restrictions disenfranchise eligible voters and violate federal voting rights law. It challenges the law known as SB1 that passed earlier this year that's aimed to overhaul election procedures in the state. Justice Department says the law also harms the rights of voters with limited English proficiency and voters and military members overseas. This is the law that prompted some Democrats to leave the state to pride to prevent its passage. 438, about 45 degrees. And coming up next, a lot of high school football action last night. Also, there's some good news for Cowboys fans. And outside with live cam, chilly start. Our weather team told us this would probably be how we ended up our week weather-wise. What about the weekend? We've heard good things. We'll check in with Mike coming up. Welcome back. Marshall Rams looking to finish a fantastic regular season by stunning the number one ranked undefeated Brennan Bears last night at Ferris Stadium, but the Bears took the first bite. Quarterback Ashley DeBose down the sideline to Chase Campbell. All Rams defenders can do is give chase as they watch him race in for the score. Later, Bears take a second bite. This time, DeBose rolls out on the bootleg, decides to keep it, gets the three-yard score. 14-0 Bears. Final from Ferris. Brennan wins big, 56-23. Holmes Huskies wrapping up their season last night with the Stevens Falcons. Falcons pulling out the stops. Quarterback Ethan Gonzalez throws it to Devin Idar on the hot route, but he pitches it back to Landon Prouty. It's the hook and ladder play for the score. Falcons go on for the two and the tie. Quarterback Jalen Moses hits Eli Gonzalez on the slant. Teams all tied up at the halftime. Final from Gus, a close one. Steven wins it by one. Final score, 29-28. to 28. 
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good news this morning, Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott participated in his first full practice yesterday since he strained his right calf on the final play of the Cowboys OT victory against the Patriots two weeks ago. So barring a setback, it appears Prescott will be good to go against the Broncos this Sunday at AT&T Stadium. One big concern now is the health of wide receiver CeeDee Lamb, who did not practice after injuring his ankle in practice this week. Kickoff Sunday at noon in Arlington. Tyrod Taylor back as starting quarterback for the Texans. He hasn't been able to play since injuring his hamstring in the second week of the season. Since that time, Texans have now lost seven in a row with rookie Davis Mills as starting quarterback. Texans travel to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Also one in seven this season. Kickoff is at noon. Our Spurs hoping to get things back on track. The team will play the Magic tonight in Orlando starting at 6. This will close out the two-game regular season series. Yes, we hope they get back on track. Uh, time now, 443, and it is probably in the 50s. No, 40s right now. And coming up next, what top turkey seller Butterball is saying about the possibility of a turkey shortage for Thanksgiving. The supply chain disruptions that are driving food prices up and causing shortages could have an impact on your Thanksgiving dinner. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. For this morning's GMA First Look, avoiding Thanksgiving turkey trouble. This year, like Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving, you may have to trim your list of trimmings. What kind of a Thanksgiving dinner is this? Where's the turkey, Chuck? Top turkey seller Butterball says it doesn't expect an overall gobbler shortage, but if you're hunting for a smaller bird, they could be tough to find. And it's not just the main dish at risk of running afoul. For your cranberry sides, Ocean Spray tells ABC it's committed to meeting customer demand, but experienced a variety of supply chain challenges like aluminum can shortages, transportation, and other factors. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the very latest on the supply chain, plus the expert shopping tips to get your Thanksgiving meal on the table, including a live interview with the president and CEO of Butterball. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor All. ABC News. We're seeing some big delays due to a deadly accident this morning. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Unfortunately, Mark, Stephanie, things have not changed there off 35 at Walls, and we're basically still seeing the same image that we saw just moments ago. Let's go ahead and take a closer look from the shot at Transguide. Uh, this is a view at 35 at Walls, and what we're seeing there along the highway are our first responders working to clear up that deadly crash. Now, our Jonathan Cotto has been live there throughout the morning providing us updates, and he'll give us more uh, throughout the show, but you can see that traffic on the frontage road is building there as well. Thankfully, the southbound lanes are moving nice and freely through that area. Just make sure that you are, of course, Stay keeping your eyes on the road if you are going to be traveling through 35 South later this morning. But taking a look at the map, uh, we are seeing that traffic continuing to build in those northbound lanes of 35. Again, that road is going to be blocked from Eisenhower to Walsham Road due to that crash. Again, that little stretch of orange does obviously indicate we are seeing that build up this morning. Not even close to five, but obviously creating a headache for lots of drivers out there. So make sure you start looking for those alternative routes this morning. We did have a crash here off Loop 410 Southbound at Morrison Boulevard. Checking the Transguide cameras, I've not been able to spot anything just yet. I'll check in with our friends there later this morning, but make sure as always when you see those flashing lights to move over or slow down. Wider scope of the map does show that it is looks like it's still pretty busy. Uh, we do have this crash off of US 90 that doesn't look like it's impacting any of the highway traffic, so just make sure that you are taking it easy out there this morning. But again, this is going to be the big issue right now. 35 at Walls where we did have that deadly crash happen a little bit earlier this morning. Traffic has been at a standstill for a few minutes now, and we're going to probably see this throughout the morning, but hopefully we'll find some resolution as with the day goes on guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. And a nice weekend. Yeah, nice weekend. It's a beautiful weekend in store and later on this afternoon. This morning depends on where you are. This is what uh, this was taken from a couple of days ago, but this is what you're going to be seeing out in portions of the hill country. And that's why temperatures are warmer out there. Got some blanket on you, blanket of clouds, but uh, here in town and really can't see it as of yet, but we have a lot of clear skies out there, so it's going to be a fantastic sunrise. And here uh, you got to kind of squint to see it, but uh, there's that darker shade of gray. That's some of the low clouds hanging around in parts of the hill country. Some of those may be on the stubborn side, otherwise clear skies off to the east. It almost looks like the uh, dividing line is just to the west of Bear County. So again, depends on where you are. And as far as around the country, I mean, just look upstream. This is what's in store for us for the next few days. 
nothing. So we're going to have plenty of sunshine. Another it's cold out there right now, 44 degrees, and that's the coldest that we've seen since going back way back to about the third week of March. And that's because we've got some pretty dry air in place, but the humidity will definitely start to come up. Now tomorrow it's still going to be another pretty cold morning and then a little bit not quite as cold Sunday, but still pretty chilly jacket weather if you're going to early uh, church services on Sunday. And then these dew points are going to continue to come up as we go into the middle part of next week. And that will last through Thursday and probably most of the day on Friday. There's uh, some kind of a little bit differences with some of the long range computer models as far as when the next front moves on through here. Here's uh, first of all the weekend. Nothing going on here. A couple of clouds here and there. Maybe some morning clouds. We may have to watch out for a little bit of fog tomorrow morning as well and more clouds about Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, but it doesn't really look like they're going to squeeze out anything as far as any rain chances. And then Thursday we clear out nicely. Now Friday, um, well, this computer model is not real bullish as far as any rain with the next frontal passage even going into Friday, but it does look like there's a fairly significant one coming on in here. So here's what's going on. We've got the northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. That high builds on in here. Things sort of uh, flatten out a little bit going into the first part of next week. This is going to keep us on the mild side. And then once again, the high just sort of uh, heads on over there in the Pacific Ocean and we get a pretty potent. Watch how this trough develops here going into next weekend. That's a pretty good one. So this could be another good strong front by then next weekend. So today we've got some clouds out to the west, clear skies this morning, sunshine 60 at noon and then 66 for a high temperature today. Still on the cool side of things by almost 10 degrees, but absolutely beautiful low humidity. It's going to cool off very quickly tonight if you are heading out and then tomorrow morning we start off mid 40s again, make it up to 70, 75 on Sunday. Couldn't ask once again for a nicer weekend, a little more humidity next week up close to 80 and then the next front should come through sometime Friday, maybe mid to late afternoon right now. Looking good. Yeah, it's gonna be a very nice weekend. Yeah, we shall excited. enjoy. Yes, excited about that and excited about even today's cold temperatures. Oh, this is great. Yeah. 452 about 45 degrees and coming up next to look at what's new in theaters today, including Marvel's Eternals and Kristen Stewart's Princess Diana movie. Your lottery numbers pick three, 422, Fireball 7, daily four numbers 4067, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 4, 5, 15, 21, 22, Texas 2 step 12, 17, 28, 32, bonus ball of 25. Good luck. Marvel's latest superhero movie is now at theaters, and Kristen Stewart's Princess Diana is also being released. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Eternals Assemble, Marvel's latest superhero movie, is in theaters now. Directed by Oscar winner Chloe Zhao. Stars include Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan, Kit Harington, and South Korean action star Don Lee. Tells me the Eternal warriors tasked with protecting the human race are a metaphor for the power of working as a team. Each of us have, have this unique superpower, but we are more powerful when we are together. That's a very important message, and that, they, that is about diversity. Do you think we'll make it? Also out today, the post-apocalyptic adventure Finch, which stars Tom Hanks as an engineer seemingly alone in the world, with a robot and a dog as his only friends. Director Miguel Sapochnik tells me these kinds of stories are appealing because... I imagine that there aren't many people who haven't sat down and thought, oh my God, what would it be like if I was the last person on Earth? You can find Finch on Apple TV+. Plus. Family are all gathered in the drawing room. And new today, Kristen Stewart is Princess Diana in Spencer, only in theaters. Ooh, a new assignment. Love is in the air. And on Netflix, it's a new season of Nick Kroll's animated coming-of-age comedy, Big Mouth. And happy birthday to Oscar-winning actress Tilda Swinton. She's 61 today. While Kardashian clan matriarch Kris Jenner is 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, still about 45 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about the new COVID-19 requirements being implemented by the Biden administration and why some are threatening the new rules with lawsuits. Plus, we'll show you a new stationary bike designed to make you feel like you're really cycling outdoors. Details in Tech Bites. And we have Stephen Cavasso still tracking that accident at I-35 at Walsham. We'll be checking in with him after the break. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio Police Department investigating a crash that's left one man dead this morning. Details coming up next. The Biden administration announcing a new vaccine mandate for several businesses. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Washington. Coming up, what the new mandate entails and the blowback from Republican lawmakers. Weather-wise, what you need to know, bottom right corner of your screen, 45 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, November 5th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We'll check in with Mike about the weather in a little bit, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. He's been tracking a big accident there in I-35 in Walson. And Mark Stephanie, thanks. Unfortunately, things look like they have just stayed the same, uh, at least over through the half hour. I-35 at Walsham is a shot we're looking at from Transguide this morning. Uh, taking a closer look right now here from this camera view, we do see that obviously first responders are still on the highway right now, working to clear this crashing. It, very difficult to make out exactly how much debris is on the highway there, but it does look like a portion of 35 is closed off at this time right here at Walsham is where that crash did occur, but you can see that traffic is building in those frontage road lanes. Looks like a river out there at this morning, so make sure that if you're driving through 35 that you pack your patience this morning because it will be a while before traffic starts to move freely through those lanes. But taking a look right now at the map that is obviously reflected there in those northbound lanes where we're seeing that yellow stretching up in the northbound lanes, the road blocked from Eisenhower Road again all to all the way to Walsham. So that big portion there is going to be closed off until first responders can get that scene cleared out. Right now, the other issues have been pretty quiet right now. We're still tracking that crash off Loop 410 in Morrison, but the big issue again is going to be right here at 35 at Walsham, where we will continue to follow this throughout the morning. Jonathan Gotho is there live this morning. Jonathan, looks like traffic is just inching right now. What are you seeing out there? That's right, Stephen. The traffic is slowly but surely continuing to build up. I'm located right between Eisenhower and Walsham off of I-35 northbound where that crash took place. Now, I mentioned information is limited, but this is what we know so far. Police say that shortly after 3 a.m., the driver of a car crashed uh, to the, in the back of a cage pickup here. Now, you can see that cage pickup here at my distance. I'll get out of the way for you can take a look here. Now, again, this is the scene here. That's the, the, the conditions of the, the driver of that pickup driver uh, uh, is unknown, but we do know EMS performed CPR on the driver who unfortunately was declared dead on arrival. Now, again, the cause of this crash is under investigation, but we'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Okay, step outside this morning. Make sure you do have a coat on. We're at 44 degrees out there at the airport, and that's the coldest morning we've seen since way back about the third week in March. And notice how the bottom number is at 42, the dew point. Really, really dry air, but relative to the temperature, the humidity is at 93%. And also what that means is you can't drop down below 42. So we're even though we have clear skies here in town, unless we got some really dry or drier air coming on in here, we're not going to be dropping down much more. But still, it's really darn cold out there. 66 for high temperature later on today. But what's interesting is we have more clouds in the hill country, so it is actually warmer in the hill country this morning. The aquifer went up uh, 7 tenths of a foot yesterday, and the the allergens mold is on the low side. All right, we have got some bone dry air, not only down here at the surface, but also upstairs, this darker shade of gray. But notice how there's a little bit of a kind of a, a lighter shade indicating a little more moisture out here to the west. And so that's helping out with some of those clouds out there to the west. But once the, those morning clouds get out of here, some may be stubborn, but once those clear out out to the west, everybody's going to have just a fantastic day. So very cold, clear east, clouds west this morning, and then mostly sunny. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Upper mid, upper 60s around the area, low humidity, but it will uh, cool off very quickly tonight. So if you are heading out this evening, make sure you do take a jacket with you. And if you're going to be at a football game tonight, Maybe a blanket's a pretty good idea. Cool mornings this weekend, especially tomorrow, and then great afternoons. And yeah, another fantastic weekend. Next week's going to get warmer, a little more humid, but that's going to be preceding another front that's going to be coming through here late next week, probably just about in time for next weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephanie? Thank you, Mike. 
New this morning, we are getting a first look at a man accused in a road rage incident that ended in a deadly shooting back in April. Police say Lucia Mendoza and her two daughters were going home from a day of shopping when the suspect, Cedric Wallace, opened fire on their vehicle in the 2800 block of North I-35. Family told us that Mendoza was shot in the head and died on her way to the hospital. Her 14-year-old daughter had a bullet go through her shoulder and another grazed her neck. Her seven-year-old daughter was not hurt. However, she witnessed that shooting. San Antonio police say Wallace is now charged with murder and aggravated assault. This morning, San Antonio police investigated a shooting at a car wash. This happened on New Laredo Highway near McLaughlin just before nine last night. Officers say a man was washing equipment there after work when a man's friends heard some loud bangs and ended up finding the victim on the ground. He was taken to the hospital, but so far no arrests have been made. And to the latest on the attempted carjacking turned shooting at the Alamo Quarry Market. Alana Castaneda, the woman shot in the face by the carjacker, is saying she just endured a seven hour surgery. Now she has two plates in her face. The shooting left her with nerve and ear damage, but she's grateful she's alive. And police say Julio Cesar Rivera II shot her while trying to take her car. Uh, officers think he is linked to another robbery from last month. Police say Rivetta robbed a woman and her five-year-old daughter at gunpoint outside a convenience store. Investigators believe he may be connected to other incidents as well. 506 right now. This morning, a new deadline for workers to get vaccinated. But the mandate is already drawing some attention from lawmakers and businesses. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Biden administration rolling out a new timeline for their vaccine mandate. By January 4th, businesses with 100 or more employees will be required to be fully vaccinated or face weekly testing. Failure to comply will result in a $14,000 fine levied against a business or a loss of Medicare and Medicaid funding. 17 million healthcare workers who don't have the option of testing will also fall under this rule. Unvaccinated employees will have to wear masks at all times. Dr. Anthony Fauci defending the mandate. We know that vaccines absolutely save lives and we know that mandates work. But Republicans are using this as a chance to fire back at the Biden administration. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds calling the rule an imposition on personal choice. This morning, 26 Republican lawmakers have said they would fight the requirements in court. Indiana will be challenging each of the three vaccine mandates in separate lawsuits. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh defending the mandate, saying it won't affect the holiday season. I respect the Attorney General right to do file a lawsuit if he chooses. Um, there are people every day in this country uh, coming down with infections. Uh, there are people still in the hospitals in America. And this morning, kids ages 5 to 11 across the country are lining up to get their first shots. Like seven-year-old Dane McCartan, who's one of the youngest Hawaii residents to get the vaccine. I wanted to get me vaccinated before my school did it, and she wanted me to get it early. Now, industry groups warned the Biden administration the new rules could exacerbate the worker shortage. So officials agreed to delay the deadline from December to January after the holiday season ends. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. It's now eight minutes past the hour, about 45 degrees. And still ahead, why AT&T and Verizon agreed to pause their 5G rollout across the country. Key eyewitness testifies in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, accused of shooting three people in Wisconsin last summer. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at a chilly 45 degrees and things will kind of be cold today, but this weekend it's looking nice. Just about 512 emotional and graphic testimony continues in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, who shot three people during unrest following the police shooting of Jacob Blake in Wisconsin last summer. As CNN's Melissa Rainey reports, his lawyers say he was acting in self-defense. Day three of testimony in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, the Illinois teenager charged with killing two people and wounding a third during protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year. The prosecution focusing on how the shooting started, beginning with the killing of Joseph Rosenbaum. She's got to get pressure on this dude. Richie McGinnis, chief video director for the website The Daily Caller, testifying that Rosenbaum, who did not appear to be armed, did chase Rittenhouse at one point. Based on Mr. Rosenbaum's, uh, the way that he was running, and, and then 
eventually lunging towards the front portion of the rifle, um, it was clear to me that something with the weapon was about to happen, and I didn't want to be on the wrong side of that. McGinnis, who was documenting the unrest that night, spoke to Rittenhouse before the shooting. So what's up? So people are getting injured. And after the shooting, had to render aid to Rosenbaum. He's hitting his chest. During cross-examination, the defense trying to paint the picture that Rosenbaum was the aggressor. You could have stopped at any time once he sees an armed individual, correct? I assume he could have, yes. He kept advancing. Correct. McGinnis also testifying he saw Gage Grosskreutz at the hospital after being shot by Rittenhouse. His bicep was effectively gone. Uh, and there was just a lot of blood. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. 513, still about 45 degrees. And still ahead, details on Amazon's new feature that allows you to move music among different devices with your voice. And we'll tell you about a new indoor bike that feels like real cycling. Once upon a time, there was a reindeer named Tiptoe who was scared to fly. Fly? Uh, maybe next year. So her friends gave her the greatest gift of all. It's a flying machine! Oh no! I just have to believe. The gift of believing in herself. So, you ready to fly to Grandma's? Okay. People who could use a lift. New Neutrogena Rapid Firming, a triple lift serum with pure collagen. 92% saw visibly firmer skin in just four weeks. <gasps> Neutrogena for people with skin. With clean, fresh ingredients, Panera's new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread is a mouth-watering explosion of yes. Craft, yes. Hardiness, yes. Living life to the flavor fullest, heck yes. Panera, live your yes. Now $1 delivery. In today's tech fights, putting the brakes on 5G. Verizon and AT&T have agreed to delay their launch of a new high-speed network until next year. Federal aviation officials say they're worried that the technology could interfere with cockpit safety devices and towers on the ground. Alexa will now let your music follow you around the house. The latest update allows users to continue listening as they move from room to room. At your command, Alexa will switch your music from one Echo device to another. You can also keep listening when you walk out the door if you own a pair of Echo Buds. Finally, the stationary bike that's meant to mimic the feel of a real bike. It's called the Tilt Bike, and it's compatible with training apps, but can also be connected to an Xbox, so riders can work out while playing a game. No pricing yet. Sales start next year. It's like your own personal Tour de France. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great weekend. Just now waking up, big problems on I-35. Tech back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, the problems still remain there off 35 at Walsham. Let's take a quick look around town, though. Where there is 35 at Walsham, right there where traffic just continues to build. But other spots around town still pretty quiet. Loop 410 at Morrison. We told you about a crash in that area, but it looks pretty quiet. I-10 at Preston. We had traffic has still been pretty light in a lot of these areas, but those areas are not the problem spots right now. As we were just talking about, that crash there off 35 at Walsham is going to be the big issue throughout the morning where we do have a deadly crash had happened a little bit earlier, probably I think just after three this morning. But we see that first responders still stay are still on the scene and it does look like a portion of 35 right now is closed off so they can get this all cleared out. But something that is not clearing out is that traffic. So make sure that you are being patient this morning or maybe start finding those alternative routes. If you are traveling up to New Braunfels a little bit later this morning, taking you right to the map, though, that traffic again just stays at a standstill where the road is blocked from Eisenhower Road to Walsham. So again, we are going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. Jonathan Koto has been providing us all those updates, so we'll continue to check in with him as long as there is a scene out there. But again, make sure you start planning those alternative routes this morning. Taking it right down here, though, we did have a crash off Loop 410 southbound at Morrison Boulevard. Based off what we just saw, Trans Guide, it looks pretty quiet. Our map may have detected this, but right now we are not seeing anything out there. However, if you drive through that area, move over, slow down, follow the rules of the road. Wider scope of the map does show that thankfully it is still predominantly a pretty quiet morning, but the big issue again is going to be right here off 35 at Walls and we're going to continue to track this throughout the morning, but it's just not looking good this morning, guys. Not at all. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, Mike. Good morning, boy. I'm surprised this uh, this flower looks so beautiful there that it's not like shriveled up with the cold temperatures. So <laughs> yeah, at the uh, moon plant waited till November to bloom, but 
in bloom all summer long. It is gorgeous. Uh, make sure that you, when you step outside, you do have a coat this morning because it's cold out there. And what's funny is it's a little bit warmer uh, heading out to the west. Got some um, upper 40s and then even 50s further on out to the west because there's more cloud cover out there. But look at that 37 Bernie stage 39 Helotus Balverde 44 in town. There's not much of a breeze out there, but it doesn't take much when you have this cold of temperatures. So five mile per hour winds out there at the airport. It feels like 42 39 is the wind chill at Randolph as of right now. Yeah, that qualifies as being very cold. And uh, yesterday, of course, we made it to uh, 56 degrees. That was the coldest high temperature that we have seen since all the way back around the middle of February. And then nice difference, about 10 degrees warmer today. Still not up to par, obviously, but everybody's going to be uh, pretty much in the 60s today all around the metropolitan area. So still kind of uh, not light jacket weather. And like I said, it's going to cool off very quickly tonight. So if you are heading out, uh, even if you don't have a jacket this afternoon, but make sure you have one tonight because once that sun even gets lower in the horizon, it'll uh, temperatures will drop down very quickly. There you can see that that very faint but darker shade of gray off to the west. That's some of the low clouds hanging around out there, and they may be a little bit on the uh, the stubborn side. But we'll see more sunshine as the day rolls on. And there's not really a heck of a lot going on around the country right now. Rain down there around Florida and off to the northwest. But all that that big trough out there to the northwest is pretty much going to be moving straight across the country. We're not really going to see any substantial uh, big weather changes until the end of next week as far as another front. It will, yes, slowly get a little milder and more humid as we go in toward the first to middle part of next week. But I mean, as far as any uh, really cloud cover, there may be a few morning clouds hanging around here in the next couple of days. And watch out for a patch of fog, especially tomorrow morning. Um, perhaps a couple of clouds Monday, a few more Tuesday and Wednesday. But um, well, this computer model does try and squeeze out a couple of showers in the hill country by Wednesday. Eh, not really sold on that one. And then by late in the week, this one also has some rain well off to the northeast of us as that next front approaches here. But again, after today, or excuse me, after what we had um, a couple of days ago, we don't really have any great rain chances around here. Sunny skies, 60 degrees at noon, and then a high temperature, we make it up to 66. And like I said, it's going to cool off very quickly tonight. And tomorrow morning, going to be another chilly one down to the mid 40s again. Nice big warm up. Up, though we'll make it up to 70 at about five to that by Sunday 75 degrees after starting off at 50. Ah, oh, nice. Probably even I don't know. What do you think? Nicer than last weekend? Oh, is that possible? I don't know. I mean, looks, looks with good. the cooler, if you like the cooler temperatures, this weekend is going to be cooler, and then um, next week a little milder, a little more humid. We haven't heard anybody complain yet. No, hmm. everybody's been pretty happy. It's, it's like, yeah, two perfect weekends. How do you choose? We'll <laughs> soak them up. Thank you, Mike. 522, about 45 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, the director for Marvel's Eternals talks about the movie's large cast. Plus, Olivia Munn is starring in a new film. Olivia Munn has a new movie heading to theaters this weekend, directed by Justine Bateman. Rick Damagilla has that story and more, including some Marvel trivia in today's Hollywood Minute. We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the deviants. If you think there are a lot of heroes in Marvel's Eternals, there were actually almost even more. Actually, one thing, I'll give you something that I don't think anyone else knows. There was 12 Eternals at first. We had to get rid of two because it was, as you can see the movie, it was way too many. I feel weird lately. Are you sick? You know, the committee in your head that tells you that you're a terrible person. You're nothing. Just never really noticed him before. You know what I'm talking about. Sure. You're a loser. Olivia Munn received creative directing from Justine Bateman to act off the voices in her character's head in Violet. The thing about working with Justine is that, you know, she is an actor's director and, you know, as an actress herself, she, um, she really knew how important it was to have a lot of as much as we could have like visceral things for me to react to. Where is it? Where is who? The boss. My boss. Clearly, you don't know me. Regina King's character in The Harder They Fall is among several based on real people from Old West history. Any of these characters could have their own film, but the power uh, of bringing them all together and having the vision to bring them together in an entertaining way um, uh, it was exciting to be a part of. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
And time now, it's 527 and it's a chilly 45 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, look at how states, lawmakers and businesses are pushing back against new federal vaccine mandates. Plus, a popular aromatherapy spray at Walmart is being recalled. Why you should stop using it right away. And you probably have heard the Spurs have plans for a beautiful new training facility on the northwest side. Ahead on GMSA, how this state-of-the-art facility is also planning to be environmentally friendly. Making headlines this hour, newer government rules mandating code vaccines for tens of millions of Americans. Now some are fighting back. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting at a chilly 45 degrees. But if you don't like this kind of weather, just hang on. The weekend's looking really good. Mike says uh, it is looking very good. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 5th. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Friday. And now we're saying, hmm, what will be better, this past weekend that we had or this upcoming weekend? Like a fine wine, you say we may actually improve on last weekend? Mm, yeah, I think so. If you like a cooler temperature, it's going to be a little bit cooler in the morning and just fantastic in the afternoon. I mean, it is kind of split in hairs because both going to be uh, just great out there. We are starting off with a lot of clear skies here in town. Do have some clouds out to the west, and so temperatures are anywhere from, say, 5 almost, uh, in some cases, 10 degrees warmer out in western portions of the hill country this morning. We're at 44 right now. The dew point is at 42. Yes, very, very dry air, but relative to the temperature, we have relatively high humidity. We can't drop down any further than that. We're probably not going to be dropping down very much more. A little bit of a breeze out there, but just enough to make that 44 feel like 42. Wind chill is 39 at Randolph. It feels like 39 in New Braunfels, and the actual air temperature is 37 right now at Bernie Stage. Yep. It's cold out there. Mold is on the low side. Uh, we are going to have just a fantastic day today. Plenty of sunshine, maybe a few leftover clouds. It could be kind of stubborn this morning out there to the west. 60 at noon, 66 for high temperature. And then once the sun goes down, temperature is going to be dropping off very, very quickly. Uh, we'll be down around 60 by 7 o'clock tonight and mid 50s by 9 o'clock. So yeah, going to a game, heading out this evening. Make sure you definitely have a jacket with you. How great will the weekend be? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, still got that big problem on the northeast side, right? That's right, Mike. And make sure you pack that patience with that cup of coffee this morning. 35 at Walsham has been the problem spot throughout the morning. Let's take a look right now. We do have, of course, those first responders that have stayed on the scene there. We do have a deadly crash that was reported a little bit earlier this morning. Unfortunately, it has just continued to cause a huge buildup of traffic traffic there on the frontage roads of 35 where traffic again just looks like it's at a standstill. It doesn't look like we've seen much progress, if any at all. So let's go ahead and take you right to the map because again, that is where we're seeing it there in the northbound lanes. The road is blocked to Eisenhower to Walsham Road. So make sure that you are looking for those alternative routes. If you're still at home and this is in your commute, maybe to Austin or even uh, to New Braunfels a little bit later this morning. So we'll continue to track that. But taking it down here, looks like we do have a stall off I-35 southbound. It's East uh, Caesar Travis Boulevard, not causing any issues issues right now, so nothing to be too alarmed about. But of course, make sure you give that driver plenty of room if you're heading through that direction. Uh, that crash off Loop 410 does look like it's cleared, so we'll get that cleared out of our map. But again, we're going to continue to track 35 at Walsham. Jonathan Cotto has been live there throughout the morning, providing us updates. What do we know so far, Jonathan? Thank you, Stephen. That's right. I'm located off of I-35 northbound between Walsham and Eisenhower, as you mentioned, where this crash right now still remains under investigation. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. I'm going to move so you can see a little bit of the scene here. That crash causing lane closures on the main lanes of I-35 north. The traffic here building up on the access road and police tell us the crash happened shortly after 3 a.m. A male driver traveling northbound on I-35 crashed into the back of a cage trailer that you can possibly see, but the, you know here the traffic is obstructing the view. Uh, we don't know the status of the person driving that pickup, but we're told the EMS did perform CPR on the driver of the car, uh, but life-saving efforts were unsuccessful. Now, Stephen, if uh, the morning commute is taking you on the I-35 northbound lanes, you can certainly expect some major delays, as you mentioned. The cause of this crash remains under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. This morning, pushback is built against federal vaccine mandates. CNN's Brett Conway has the latest on the standoff. We know that vaccines absolutely save lives, and we know that mandates work. And now the federal government's mandates have a deadline. 
People who work with companies that have 100 or more employees, certain health care workers, and federal contractors will need to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by January 4th. People with big companies will have the option of wearing masks and getting tested every week. And what we want to do is prevent other deaths. And how do we do it? Making sure that workplaces are safe. But pushback is building. Louisiana, Indiana, and Mississippi just filed a lawsuit against the Biden administration Thursday, saying the mandates constitute federal overreach and risk negatively impacting the workforce. The attorney general in Florida says she will legally challenge the mandate for large companies. In South Carolina, Governor Henry McMaster issued an executive order prohibiting state agencies from requiring employees to get vaccinated. The state is one of a long list of states that have already filed lawsuits against the administration. And at least 40 Senate Republicans say they plan to challenge the mandates using the Congressional Review Act. But the White House is standing its ground. Why are they getting in the way of trying to protect and save lives? That's all we're trying to do. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The U.S. State Department is announcing a $10 million reward for information on the hackers who forced a major U.S. fuel operator to shut down back in May. The ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline caused widespread disruptions. It also caused the fuel operator to temporarily shut down the 5,500-mile pipeline that carries nearly half of the fuel used on the East Coast. A $5 million reward is also being offered for information in a hack involving the so-called dark side ransomware. It's the latest effort by the Biden administration to put pressure on cyber criminals. A second strong geomagnetic magnetic storm this week producing colorful auroras across the world. This storm was a level three out of five. The storm was seen Wednesday into Thursday by NOAA satellites and ground-based instruments. The storms are caused by solar flares and trigger auroras, also known as the northern and southern lights. A level three storm often produces northern lights seen as far south as Oregon and Illinois. The Washington Post reports this storm makes up for disappointing aurora displays over the Halloween weekend. And time now, it's 536 and it's a chilly 45 degrees out there. Still ahead, folks, an important recall this morning regarding some aromatherapy spray sold at Walmart. Also next, we get an update on No Shave November and see how much money that we've raised so far. And outside with live camp, it's going to be a fantastic weekend. You're going to want to get outside this weekend, but in the mornings, still going to be cold. How cold? Mike has details coming up in your extended forecast right here on GMSA. Things are getting scruffy here on GMSA this Friday morning and all around the KSAT 12 newsroom as No Shave November is now in full swing. Stephen Cavazos is leading that campaign and joins us now with an update. Hey, good morning, Stephen. Morning. Good morning. Would we call what uh, Mark has five o'clock shadow? Uh, I think we call it a 540 in the morning shadow. <laughs> uh, and how about Mike? Mike's is looking yeah. good. Mike's is yeah. looking good. I feel like we need to get a quick shot, look at Mike here really quick, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But you know, the great thing is we've been off to a pretty great start just five days into No Shave November. And of course, things have been well. Donations are coming in and this is great news as all that money that we've raised so far does go to cancer research, treatment and prevention. Now here's a look at the 15 guys here in the KSAT newsroom who are participating. Now these pictures were taken on day one and I look pretty serious there, I think, <laughs> but I'm pretty happy about the cause and we are already to start to starting to look a little bit different as we've been sharing. Everyone uh, everyone has a different reason for supporting this great cause. Just take a look at here what Max Massey had to say. Uh, he says, I cannot think of a better platform to raise awareness and raise funds to help fight cancer. I have so many friends and family members who have gone through, passed away from or are going through a battle with cancer. This is not just a month to avoid shaving. It's a way for our viewers and friends on social media to see a stark difference in our normal year round appearance and RJ Marcus says I am extremely honored to be a part of our 2021 case at no shave November crew. I am taking part in this endeavor not only to raise money and awareness to help fight cancer, but to honor loved ones that have lost their lives to this terrible disease. My uncle Gerardo Garcia passed away in 2013. He was my aunt Gloria's husband and essentially another brother for my mom and her siblings. He loved soccer and everyone misses him to this day. So clearly this is a very personal uh, mission for a lot of us here in case and you can read more from all the guys on our website. Just head to case 
ksat.com slash no save. There you will find plenty of information as well as a link to donate to the team ksat. And right now we are looking roughly at just maybe $400 shy of $3,000. So oh, I think hey. we've been off to a pretty good start so far and everyone has been looking pretty good too. And aren't we duking it out for the top spot right now? Well, you know, I think right now it's you and Mike oh, are is going it? head and head. Okay. Yeah, All so, right. uh, but I'm not worried what? about him. I'm worried about you. <laughs> we're, we're getting the donations rolling in and I think we've been off to a really great start and just want to thank our viewers that have donated so far and just keep it coming in. Thanks, Stephen. Thank Appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. Team KSAT. Right now, <laughs> 542, about 45 degrees. And I know we were just talking to Stephen Cavazos, but let's look at, at the roads with TransGuy right now. Looking at 281 and Hildebrand, we'll be checking back with him a little later on. In your morning consumer headlines, the CDC is warning doctors to be on the lookout for a rare tropical disease connected to an aromatherapy spray sold at Walmart. The Better Home and Gardens aromatherapy room spray with gemstones was already connected to a death in Georgia. Now someone in Kansas has died from the disease and cases have been reported in Minnesota and here in Texas as well. The CDC has now issued a new alert for healthcare professionals to be aware of the potential symptoms of exposure. Consumers are urged to immediately stop Stop using the spray, double bag it, and return it to Walmart for a refund. Move over Starbucks, two other coffee chains showing their own version of holiday cheer. This week, Duncan and Caribou Coffee released seasonal cups. Duncan debuted the full lineup of cups Wednesday with this new seasonal beverages. The four different designs showcase tangled lights, a gift bow, candy crumbs, and a shaken logo. All things Duncan uh, call the holiday simply perfect imperfect joys. Caribou Coffee added its trio of holiday cup designs Thursday with the return of three holiday beverages. According to the coffee shop, the cup's designs feature iconic images and festive patterns. And we kind of agree. Yes, we do. $38,000. That's how much a pair of Kobe Bryant sneakers are expected to bring at an upcoming auction. The black, white, and gold Nike Air Zoom Warachi 2K for basketball sneakers are considered Bryant's first pair of Nikes. The NBA icon wore them in 2004 during the Los Angeles Lakers victory over the LA Clippers. This will, it, so the bees will hold the auction on November 11th. $38,000? Mm -hmm. Actually sounds low to me. I actually thought it would be like <laughs> three times that much. Really? Or Paracopi kicks. I, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's pretty, pretty pricey. It still. is. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. Yeah. 546, let's get an update on the situation. If your travels take you on 35 north out of the downtown area, heads up again. Yeah, well, we do have some good progress here, Mark and Steph. Take a look, 35 at Walsham. It does look like the highway that had been closed off, that portion that is, looks like a little bit of it, our portion has reopened, and we're seeing more vehicles getting on right now. However, we still do have some first responders out there that are working to clear up the scene of a deadly crash. It happened earlier this morning, just a little bit after 3. So, uh, but if they're on the frontage road, we still see that big stand still there. But make sure that you are giving these first responders plenty of room. They've been out there throughout the morning working to clear up the debris. Uh, but our our Jonathan Goto has been giving us all the live reports and he'll be coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Let's go ahead and take you to the map uh, where we still see that stretch of orange and yellow that builds in the northbound lanes. Now the road was still blocked from Eisenhower all the way to Walsham, but it does again look like we are seeing a few lanes opening up at this hour. However, make sure that you are patient if you are driving through that area because there is still a stretch of traffic that looks like it could be there for a little while. So taking you down over here, that stall still been a pesky issue off I-35 southbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard, not causing any issues, but something to be on the lookout for if you travel up through the downtown San Antonio area. Uh, but overall map does show lots of green on the screen. Uh, I forgot to clear that crash from 410 at Morrison. Doesn't look like there's anything out there any longer. So that's some good news there. But let's check out these outbound times. Usually I like to show the inbound times at the start of every half hour. But uh, these outbound times, I wanted to see how that crash was affecting any traffic going up to 35 in New Braunfels. Thankfully, it's still pretty green across the board. 27 minutes if you're heading up 35. But again, make sure that you're watching out for this crash. A different shot at Transguide shows looks like uh, we are seeing some of the scene clearing up there or hero trucks uh, getting out of the way and it looks like drivers are moving through the lanes freely, but just been a rough morning for those drivers out there. Yes, sir. It looks like that's about that. Mike joined us now. Mike, I think you'll agree whiskers this time of year can help keep the face warm. Right. A little bit, yeah. I don't, I don't think oh, you're a itching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> thought usually, you were thinking. Usually it doesn't start till about three weeks into it. So thinking um, uh, he uses the other hand for thinking. Oh. So wait, I was <laughs> I'm so we're in neck and neck for first place. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't I know. I just checked. It's Justin Horn, Mark, Justin, and you, Mike. But you're, I, you're, you're uh, pretty close up I'm there. putting out a call to all gray-haired folks. <laughs> team, team Mike? <laughs> team gray hair. So. Team gray hair. I got what, one or two. 
somewhere? It's all for a great cause, <laughs> and it's, seriously, but it's just bragging rights amongst us. So. Yes. Got you, Mike. All right, beautiful <laughs> picture. Uh, this was uh, heading somebody heading home from Dallas uh, a couple of days ago. A few clouds out there. This is what you're going to be seeing in the uh, Hill Country this morning. And bam, there we're seeing plane coming in and it is landing up to the northwest. So we've got uh, winds primarily out of the north. Very light wind out there, uh, but enough to give us a, somewhat of a wind chill. All right, temperatures 44 here in town, 52 in Hondo, 56 Del Rio. Same thing, Catula. So we do have more clouds out in western parts of our area, kind of western half, if you will, cut in half right down the middle there. And those are those low clouds. And again, clouds act like a blanket, especially low clouds like this helps to hold some of the heat in. So we've got very dry air that moved in in behind that front a couple of days ago. That's going to remain the case through not only today, but tomorrow. Um, it starts to creep back in here. Almost a similar situation to what we had last weekend. I don't think it gets quite as high. Remember, we were flirting with about 60 or so for a, a dew point by mid afternoon on Halloween. But I think it's going to stay even a little bit drier, more comfortable uh, all the way through the weekend. Then the humidity comes back in here, starting off the uh, first and middle part of next week. That then is going to be preceding another front that's going to move through here. Timing of it right now is, I say, sometime on Friday. It kind of depends on which computer model one has. A little earlier on Friday and still a week away. Obviously, a lot can change, but one that has it earlier on Friday, one has it later. Uh, one thing for sure through the weekend, it's just going to be fantastic out there. A couple of low clouds. We're going to have to watch out for maybe some fog tomorrow morning and then just going into uh, first of next week. A couple of clouds hanging around here on Monday. A few more Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, one computer model tries to scare up a stray shower on Wednesday. This one in particular does not. So, not really sold on anything coming in here by midweek as far as just a stray shower and then going into Friday. Again, this computer model has a couple of showers well off to the northeast next Friday, along with the passage of that next front. But uh, it's not really sold on that as of yet, so we'll still continue to watch that. But again, it right now it's looking like a fairly potent front for next week. All right, we have feeling the delightful weather in behind the front that moved through a couple of days ago. We're going to warm up nicely 60 at noon, 66 high temperature today, plenty of sunshine, maybe even a couple of leftover clouds off to the west. It's going to be just beautiful again tomorrow morning. Great night tonight again, but boy, make sure you take a jacket. 70 tomorrow, 75 on Sunday. Pleasant mornings, beautiful afternoon. Set your clocks back before you go to bed tomorrow night. And then a few more clowns around next week and a little milder temperatures. I've did, noticed. Does his donations go up in the last three minutes or so? I, d I should donate under your cause, Mike. But, you know, <laughs> after that call, no, nah, we're still the same. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. Just but I'll donate for you. All right. Hang in there, Mike. You'll be fine. <laughs> All the gray hair. You've got most of the month to go. That's right. It's still early, Mike. Five days yes. in. Yeah. Yeah, we're still waiting on Steph's donation, though. No pressure. Yeah, no. By 52, <laughs> about 45 degrees. You like best, Stephanie. <laughs> oh. I love you, Steph. <laughs> Everybody gets a donation. <laughs> There's a new free update out now for Nintendo's popular Animal Crossing New Horizons. We're going to tell you how you can get it and what's included. I love you more. Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing New Horizons has received a pair of big expansions. Kick back and relax while Brewster serves you up a cup of his finest pan-selected coffee. There's a couple of really incredible things coming to Animal Crossing New Horizons. And I think you have to start with the idea that this game sold about 30 million units which is unbelievable. It's now one of the most important properties that Nintendo owns. KK Slider, who holds a live concert at the Plaza every Saturday, will release additional songs. This new update is bringing a whole bunch of new enhancements and new uh, elements to the game that is gonna make the game a lot more, uh, you know, a lot larger and a lot more fun. Cooking is coming to DIY recipes. Looks like Harv wants to create a plaza with all sorts of shops. Gyroids make rather interesting sounds. Experiment with different gyroid combinations. But along with the free update that's coming, the version 2.0, they've also got a brand new downloadable piece of content, which is paid, um, which is called Happy Home Paradise. And it gives you a peninsula 
to then become basically a resort planner and you take on clients and you have a kind of a limitless budget to just imagine this new sort of community. Through your work, you'll be in charge of coordinating dream lifestyles for characters. People love this game and it became this really fantastic retreat from the uh, pervasive uh, inescapable reality of a pandemic. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. What do you think? Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, cleanup underway after a car crashes into a home on the south side. We will tell you if anyone was hurt. One person is dead this morning after a crash on the northeast side. Jonathan Cotto staying on top of this story will join us live with more on that. And Transkai, the incident on 35 North has now cleared. We're looking live at 281 and Hildebrand. The good news, the roads are dry right now compared to yesterday morning. Setting up for a nice weekend weather-wise, Stephen and Mike have more to come right here on GMSA. One man is dead after a crash taking place here on the main lanes of I-35 northbound. Details on this incident coming up next. NASA getting ready for the end of the world. We'll show you the agency's plans to divert asteroids headed for Earth. A very cold morning right now. We're at 45 degrees, but we've been kind of waiting for this nice cold weather. And this weekend, it's looking nice. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Hope you slept well last night. It is Friday. It's November 5th. Thanks for joining us today. And if you have to spend an extended amount of time outdoors, definitely bundle up. Oh, yeah. And this is going to be a fantastic weekend. Mike says if you love last weekend, he's ordered more of that and there's enough for everybody. Nice. Yeah, exactly. And this is one of those mornings where you open up the door and the dog's going to go. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm good. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> it actually cooled down a little bit more just in the uh, at the top of the hour. And uh, we are down to 43 degrees now here in town and the wind chill feels like 40 38 is the wind chill at Randolph and the actual air temperature is 37 degrees at Bernie. So yep, everybody's pretty chilly. You notice how we got a couple of 50s out to heading out to the west. There are more clouds out to the west, so there is a little bit of a blanket on top of things and mold is on the low side from yesterday's reading. Of course, the updated count is going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. So this morning we're going to stay right around low 40s and clouds out to the west, clear skies to the east, and then it's going to be a nice warm up throughout the morning. We'll make it up to 60 at noon and then top off with a high temperature about 10 above yesterday. Yesterday we only stayed at 56 degrees. We'll make it up to 66 today, but still about 10 below normal wind out of the northeast at about 10 15 miles per hour. An absolutely fantastic day. If you are heading out this evening, make sure you take a jacket because it'll cool off very quickly. Once again, as a matter of fact, if you are heading off to a football game right around kickoff time, say just about uh, seven o'clock or so 60 degrees and then continue to drop down into the mid 50s throughout the course of the game but beautiful clear skies out there weekend forecast how perfect will it be details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos big accident on the northeast side what's the latest sir? well the good news is Mike that crash has since cleared out 35 at Eisenhower was a portion what was closed off a little bit earlier due to that crash uh, we can see that traffic is moving through 35 nice and easy there but it has been a mess throughout the morning let's take a quick look around town before we get to our maps because US 90 at 35 it does look like traffic is picking up we are almost at morning rush hour so the good news is some of the issues have been uh, looks like they have resolved, especially that big crash over there off 35. Just take a look right now from this shot at trans guide. I 35 at Walsham. If you were with us about maybe even a few minutes ago, we saw tons of flashing lights out there and a river of traffic on the frontage road lanes, but it does look like it's pretty normal there. Now let's take you right to our map because that crash did cause a portion to be blocked off there at Eisenhower Road to Walsham Road. But looking at the map, it does look like we see a lot of green in those lanes, so that's some good news there. Uh, still have that stall though. Been a pesky issue throughout the morning off I 35 South at Cesar Chavez Boulevard, so we'll be watching out for that. But the wider scope does show 6 a.m. hour has been off to a better start than what we were seeing at 430, where we had a lot of issues out there, specifically here off 35 at Walsham. Jonathan Cotto has been tracking it throughout the morning. Jonathan, have there been any updates? It looks like things are moving. Good morning, Stephen. That's right. The scene is clearing just like that in a matter of hours. And as a matter of fact, just a couple of minutes ago, it was a busy scene here behind me on the main lanes of I-35. But fortunately, these lanes have opened up. Now, as far as that crash, information is limited. But this is what we know so far. And let's take a look at what that scene looked like 
earlier this morning. Police, along with the San Antonio Fire Department, responded to this scene on the main lanes of I-35 northbound shortly after 3 a.m. A male driver traveling northbound crashed behind or to the back end of a cage trailer. Now, we don't know the conditions of the driver of the white pickup that was pulling that cage trailer, but as far as that male driver, EMS did attempt to perform CPR, but those CPR efforts were unsuccessful. Now, the cause of this investigation, or if even alcohol re was related, well, that's all waiting to be determined and is currently under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Cleanup is underway following a north side apartment fire it happened on McCarty Road near Blanco. Firefighters say fire was shooting from some of the windows of one of the units. No one was hurt in the incident. The cause of the fire still unclear. Crews say at least one unit was heavily damaged. The Red Cross is helping people who live there. This morning, more details on that deadly attack close to a popular resort packed with Americans near Cancun, Mexico. Two people were killed when gunfire erupted on the beach, sending tourists, including Americans, running for their lives. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details. New video this morning of tourists scrambling to safety at this popular resort in Cancun, Mexico, after a gunfight broke out on the beach. This is the pool that I was in when we heard the gunshots about 2.15 today. Guests at the Hyatt Ziva Riviera Cancun Resort were told to shelter in place after hearing multiple gunshots. This picture showing how one person barricaded their door. Guests were finally told they were safe after taking cover for more than one hour. We are all safe at this time. They just directed all of us to uh, go to our rooms and they would help us get into our room because so many people had left keys and so forth on the beach or in, their, uh, in the pool when they uh, ran for safety. Mexican authorities say a group of armed men opened fire at the beach outside the hotel in what they describe as a confrontation between drug dealers. According to local news outlets, men armed with long guns came to the beach by boat, rushing the rival gang amid a sea of panicking tourists. Authorities say two suspected gun members died before the suspects took off in a stolen boat. One tourist was reportedly treated for a minor injury after being hit with a gun. This morning, the U.S. State Department says it's closely following the reports to determine if any American citizens were affected. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Colin Powell, the widely praised soldier diplomat who died of complications of COVID, complications rather, COVID last month, is being remembered at a funeral service today at Washington's National Cathedral. Powell was a Vietnam combat veteran who rose to become the first black chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and first black secretary of state. Powell had been vaccinated against the virus, but his family said his immune system had been compromised by multiple myeloma. The U.S. Justice Department is suing the state of Texas over its new voting restrictions. The Justice Department says the restrictions disenfranchise eligible voters and violate federal voting rights law. It challenges the law known as SB1 that passed earlier this year that's aimed to overhaul election procedures in the state. The Justice Department says the law also harms the rights of voters with limited English proficiency and voters and military members overseas. This is the law that prompted some Democrats to leave the state to try to prevent the passage. Today, the U.S. House expected to vote on two major pillars of President Biden's agenda. A senior Democratic aide says House members will now vote on both a sweeping social safety net plan along with the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Party leaders are trying to lock down votes for the economic and climate package. However, several provisions still being hammered out as some Democrats want to delay a vote until a Congressional Budget Office review comes in. Timelines for passage of the infrastructure bill have already been pushed back twice. NASA wants to avoid an Armageddon situation. This month, the space agency will launch its first planetary defense test mission called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. The DART spacecraft's goal is to crash into an asteroid to determine if that impact will change the course. It's an answer NASA officials want before an asteroid heads towards Earth. And time now, it's 6.08 and about 44 degrees out there. The Biden administration announcing a new vaccine mandate for several businesses. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting from Washington. Coming up, what the new mandate entails and the blowback from Republican lawmakers. And we'll get you ready for Sunday football. Cowboys will try to extend their win streak. They're getting a big weapon back as they prepare to host the Denver Broncos. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yay, we get to use our coats now. It's 44 degrees out there. We're expecting a cold morning tomorrow as well. But you know what? The weekend looks nice. We'll be right back.
And welcome back at 612 this morning, a new deadline for workers to get vaccinated. But the mandate's already drawing ire from lawmakers and some businesses. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Biden administration rolling out a new timeline for their vaccine mandate. By January 4th, businesses with 100 or more employees will be required to be fully vaccinated or face weekly testing. Failure to comply will result in a $14,000 fine levied against a business or a loss of Medicare and Medicaid funding. 17 million healthcare workers who don't have the option of testing will also fall under this rule. Unvaccinated employees will have to wear masks at all times. Dr. Anthony Fauci defending the mandate. We know that vaccines absolutely save lives and we know that mandates work. But Republicans are using this as a chance to fire back at the Biden administration. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds calling the rule an imposition on personal choice. This morning, 26 Republican lawmakers have said they would fight the requirements in court. Indiana will be challenging each of the three vaccine mandates in separate lawsuits. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh defending the mandate, saying it won't affect the holiday season. I respect the Attorney General's right to do file a lawsuit if he chooses. Um, there are people every day in this country uh, coming down with infections. Uh, there are people still in the hospitals in America. And this morning, kids ages 5 to 11 across the country are lining up to get their first shots. Like 7-year-old Dane McCartan, who's one of the youngest Hawaii residents to get the vaccine. I wanted to get me vaccinated before my school did it, and she wanted me to get it early. Now, industry groups warned the Biden administration the new rules could exacerbate the worker shortage. So officials agreed to delay the deadline from December to January after the holiday season ends. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 614. And there are some problems there at Highway 50, 151 and Loop 410. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, Mark, Stephanie, when one issue resolves, another one pops up, and that's what we're seeing here on State Highway 151 at Loop 410 West. Now, this is a shot at Transguide. It does look like we have plenty of first responders that are out there on the scene right now. That is a shot from 410, what we're looking at there. Uh, traffic looks like it's still moving through that area now. Well, it's not clear exactly what has caused this crash to happen. We can take you to the map. We are seeing a buildup there in those south southbound lanes of Loop 410 right at Marbach, where that traffic again continues to build. We'll work to bring you more information throughout the morning, but it is starting to get pretty busy out there. Let's take you right over here to I-10 eastbound at I-37, where we have a crash that was detected. Our trans guide cameras have detected that there is some are some first responders out there this morning, so make sure that you are driving carefully. Overall view of the map does show a few issues remain scattered throughout the area. It looks like we have a stalled vehicle also there off Loop 410. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, but right now it looks like this is going to be the pressing issue. Issue. There's a lot of flashing lights indicating a heavy first responder presence. We're going to continue to monitor the monitor this throughout the morning, guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. Mike must have been thinking Christmas carols when he wrote his note for social on the web this morning. Aww. What could that be? <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside. Well, it, you will definitely think that when you step outside because, yep, it is uh, very cold and temperatures are in the 40s, even a couple of 30s, but then further out to the west, we're in the 50s right now thanks to uh, some cloud cover and then it's going to warm up nicely. You know, still light jacket weather, especially if you're in the shadows today, and then it's going to cool off really quickly tonight. Once the the sun goes down, here's something to do this weekend. Head out toward the hill country. Look at those beautiful blue skies. This was taken out there around the Devil River State Natural Area. Oh, goodness. Yeah, drive up I-10 and toward the hill country this weekend is going to be perfect for it. All right, no sign of the uh, sun as of yet. As a matter of fact, it's going to be still about another hour and a half until it decides to uh, come up over the, the horizon right there. This morning, well, first of all, let's go back to yesterday, 56 degrees. That was the coldest afternoon temperature since way back on February 19th, and that's even lower than what our average low temperatures of the coldest time of the year, which is right after the first of the year at 63. And then this morning we're at 43 degrees. That is the coldest low temperature since going back all the way to March 20th when we hit 42. And you can see some of these temperatures, 39 had Lotus, 38 Bald Verde. Bernie stage uh, last hour was down to 37 degrees and there's not much of a breeze, but where there is just that little hint, there is somewhat of a wind chill. So it feels like 40 here in town and 38 right now at Randolph. Temperatures out to the west are a little bit warmer. 
or not as cold, I guess you could say, in the 50s because we do have some clouds still hanging out there out to the west. By the way, I just got a, a text from uh, Justin Horn. He said no fog in his neighborhood, but there was a lot of dew hanging around here. Thanks to all this, you know, some of the moisture in the ground and all of the, uh, the, the relatively high humidity. Now we're not seeing, like I said, any fog, but tomorrow may look out for a little bit of fog. All right, here's what's going on. We've got that high up to the west of us and this flow that is coming in here out of the north. That's what's helping to keep us on the cool side and it's going to stay this way next couple of days. We'll start to see a gradual warm up. The weekend is still going to be overall just fantastic and then we go into next week and this high is going to be sort of dominating things. It will be milder. We're going to get some more moisture coming in here. So a few clouds Monday, more clouds Tuesday, Wednesday and then we're going to be looking at another front which is going to try and work its way on through here and the timing of this right now appears to be somewhat by Friday, maybe into Saturday and this looks like it could be a pretty good one for again then next weekend this weekend no question about it it's going to be fantastic starting with today 60 at noon sunny skies high temperature we're going to make it up to 66 degrees and again heading out football game tonight heading out this evening make sure you do take a coat because it's going to cool off real quick actually you know when that sun gets a little lower in the horizon it's like oh what happened to temperatures yeah they cool off quickly 70 tomorrow after starting off in the 40s 50 sunday morning Gonna need a jacket going to early church services and don't forget to set your clocks back one hour or else you will be late and then milder next week. You don't want to be late. No. no. We got this. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. 618, about 44 degrees. And speaking of the clock, the clock is ticking when it comes to Thanksgiving meal prep, and there may be some holiday favorites you will not be able to find on store shelves. That's ahead in your GMA first look. with moderate to severe psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis are rethinking the choices they make, like the splash they create, the way they exaggerate, the surprises they initiate. Otesla, it's a choice you can make. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, 75% clearer skin is achievable with reduced redness, thickness, and scaliness of plaques. For psoriatic arthritis, Otesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Otesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. For this morning's GMA first look, avoiding Thanksgiving turkey trouble. This year, like Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving, you may have to trim your list of trimmings. What kind of a Thanksgiving dinner is this? Where's the turkey, Chuck? Top turkey seller Butterball says it doesn't expect an overall gobbler shortage, but if you're hunting for a smaller bird, they could be tough to find. And it's not just the main dish at risk of running afoul. For your cranberry sides, Ocean Spray tells ABC it's committed to meeting customer demand, but experienced a variety of supply chain challenges like aluminum can shortages, transportation, and other factors. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the very latest on the supply chain, plus the expert shopping tips to get your Thanksgiving meal on the table, including a live interview with the president and CEO of Butterball. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good news, Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott participating in his first full practice yesterday since straining his right calf on the final play of the Cowboys' overtime victory against the Patriots two weeks ago. It appears Prescott will be good to go against the Broncos Sunday at AT&T Stadium. Kickoff Sunday at noon in Arlington. Tyrod Taylor back at starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. He hasn't been able to play since injuring his hamstring in the second week of the season. Texans travel to Miami Sunday to take on the Dolphins. Kick off of that game also at noon. And time now, it's 623 and about 44 degrees out there. Still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, gunfire erupts near Cancun, Mexico in an apparent gang battle. At least, at least two people were killed. We're going to have all those details. And an early morning crash on the northeast side leaves one person dead. Just ahead, Jonathan Cotto will join us with the very latest on the story. 
And a quick look outside with Transguide at the roadways. There's a look there at 151 and Loop 410. There are some problems there, and we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. It's been four years since that horrific mass shooting at a church in Sutherland Springs. Dozens of people killed. We're going to take a look back on the tragic day. This morning, you will definitely need a jacket out there. Looks like we have a few clouds streaking across the sky over South Texas, but we're in the mid 40s and that is here in the city. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 5th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I'm finding myself kind of popular at my daughter's school because yeah. Yeah, people, more than usual. Well, no, <laughs> people are coming up to me, but they're actually thanking. There's like, hey, tell Mike, thank you. Tell Justin, thank you. They're thanking you oh, for the gotcha. nice weather. Well, wish it was our doing. We're just, you know, just calling it the way we see it. But uh, yeah, it is wonderful out there. So a lot of people just love this and, you know, all the nice warm food that you can eat with it and everything. So yeah, we got a lot of clear skies right now. Uh, more clouds off to the west. And so temperatures are not quite as chilly, but we're down to 40. Speaking of chilly, oh. Steven said he was going to be making some of that. OK, I'm back 43 here in town. Dew point stands at 41. So yes, the humidity, the dew point temperature is very low, but relative humidity, when you compare those two numbers, the relative humidity is very high. We do have a little bit of a breeze out there. Uh, there is some dew kind of hanging around, not any fog being reported right now. We may have to watch out for some, though, tomorrow. So go out toward Castro, 54 degrees. 52 and then wind chill readings 40 here in town 38 at Randolph and 37 up the road in Balverde. So because of the cloud cover that helps to keep, hold the, uh, the heat in a little bit. And even though there's not much of a breeze out there, just enough to just add that little bite to some of these temperatures. Mold is on the low side. Updated counts going to come out in about though, say half hour, 45 minutes or so. Clear, cold uh, to the east, clouds off to the west, and then lots of sunshine later on today. Maybe a stubborn cloud or two off to the west. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. And that's the way it's going to stay over the weekend. Cool mornings down in the 40s again tomorrow, right around 50 Sunday morning, up into the um, kind of upper 60s, low 70s. Just fantastic, fantastic, pardon me, make some outdoor plans this weekend. And then next week, it's going to get warmer, a little bit more humid. Then we have another front that's going to be coming through uh, right around. We're going to be watching it about this time next week. More on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So after that big, big incident, fairly quiet right now. Yeah, I wish we could say that, Mike. State Highway at well, Loop 410 West is what we're looking at right now, and you can see tons of flashing lights out there. We have have a crash that is causing some big issues and with morning rush basically here you're going to want to be very careful out there this morning. We're seeing a bunch of getting a bunch of flashing lights as we take a closer look. Camera a little bit shaky there, but traffic looks like it is still moving through some of those lanes taking you right to the map. But we do have some of the buildup in those southbound lanes of 410 with that stretch of red that is starting to jump up there. Uh, but again, we're going to continue to watch this throughout the morning and give you all the updates as needed. Uh, but it's not the only issue we've spotted. We've been able to see this crash. It's also causing some issues off I 10 East eastbound at I-37. I was checking the Transguide cameras now, though. It looks like that may have just cleared, so seen some progress out there. Let's take a wider look at the map because we have had a few crashes out there that have been causing some big issues, and again, we are just minutes away from morning rush, so hopefully uh, we will see some resolution before we start getting more folks out there. Haven't had a chance to talk about these inbound times just yet. If you're traveling into San Antonio, uh, well, it's pretty much green across the board, except with, the, with Lavernia right now, 87, 23 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area but that's not too bad. That's what we usually see around this time. So some good news there, but this is what we're going to continue to watch throughout the morning. Just make sure to follow the rules of the road, move over or slow down. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A man is dead this morning after he crashed his car on the northeast side. It happened just after three this morning on I-35 near Walsham Road. Police say the man's car crashed into the back of a trailer. Crews performed CPR on that driver of the car, but they were not successful. He died at the scene. Also new this morning, cleanup underway after a vehicle crashed into a south side home. Happened around 2 this morning on Neal Avenue near Pleasanton Road. Police tell us a man and woman inside the car took off after crashing the vehicle. They also hit a tree and a utility pole. No one was hurt. And this morning we are getting a first look at the man accused in a road rage incident that ended with a shooting killing one woman. It happened back in April, and police say Cedric Wallace is accused of shooting at Lucia Mendoza and her two daughters as they were driving home from a day of shopping. Police say he opened fire on their vehicle in the 2800 block of I-35 North. Family members told us that Mendoza was shot in the head 
and died on the way to the hospital. Her 14-year-old daughter, Kimberly, had a bullet go through her shoulder and another grazed her neck. Her seven-year-old daughter, Alexa, was not hurt, but we were told she witnessed the shooting. San Antonio police say Wallace is now charged with murder and aggravated assault. To the latest now on a shooting investigation at a Southwest Side car wash happened on New Laredo Highway near McLaughlin just before nine last night. I was going to say a man was washing some equipment there when the man's friends heard some loud bangs. They turned and found the victim on the ground. He was taken to a hospital. His condition is not known at this time. So far, no arrests have been made. We have an update on that attempted carjacking turned shooting at the Alamo Quarry Market. Alana Castaneda, the woman shot in the face by the carjacker, is saying she endured a seven hour surgery. Now she has two plates in her face. The shooting left her with nerve and ear damage, but she says she is grateful she's alive. Police say Julio Cesar Rivera II shot her while trying to take her car. Officers believe he is linked to another robbery from last month. Police say Rivera robbed a woman and her five-year-old daughter at gunpoint outside a convenience store. Investigators believe he may be connected to other incidents as well. Today marks the fourth anniversary of the deadly shooting at First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. On November 5th, 2017, 26 people were killed, 20 others were hurt when a gunman opened fire during Sunday church services. Among the dead, an unborn child. It was the deadliest shooting in an American place of worship in modern history. The gunman, Devin Patrick Kelly of New Braunfels, was chased off the scene and ultimately died from a combination of return fire and a self-inflicted gunshot wound. U.S. Air Force dealt most of the blame. Recently, a federal judge ruled the shooting likely would not have happened had the Air Force put critical information about Kelly's past in the National FBI database. Two people are dead after a gunfight near a hotel near Cancun, Mexico on Thursday. Authorities there say there was a confrontation between members of hostile groups of drug dealers, and they say two suspected gang members died. Before the suspects took off in a stolen boat, one tourist was reportedly treated for a minor injury after being hit with a gun. Now, one tourist was reportedly treated for another minor injury. The U.S. State Department says it's closely following the reports to determine if any American citizens were affected. U.S. State Department announcing a $10 million reward for information on the hackers who forced a major U.S. fuel operator to shut down. The ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline back in May caused widespread disruption and caused the fuel operator to temporarily shut down the 5,500-mile pipeline that carries 45% of the fuel used on the East Coast. Authorities looking for information that leads to the identification or location of senior members of the Russian-speaking ransomware gang responsible for the attack. A $5 million reward is also being offered for information in a hack involving the so-called dark side ransomware. It is the latest effort by the Biden administration to put pressure on cyber criminals. Tens of millions of Americans who work at companies with 100 or more employees will need to be fully vaccinated against COVID by January 4th or get tested for the virus weekly under new government rules. The requirements are the Biden administration's boldest move yet to persuade reluctant Americans to get vaccinated. Republican state officials reacted with swift rebukes to the new mandate, threatening a wave of lawsuits and other actions. A growing roster of GOP governors and attorneys general say more lawsuits are on the way. And this morning, according to local numbers, 64 percent of all Bear County is vaccinated against COVID-19. And looking across the city, vaccination rates vary by zip code. But one of the city's top doctors, chief of epidemiology, Dr. Rita Espinosa, tells us those numbers don't tell the full story. She says because some zip codes are on the edge of the county, there's a possibility that part of the population is outside of the county, which may be one of the reasons why the numbers in those zip codes appear to be Low. However, she says it's nearly impossible for the health department to point to one key reason why there are disparities between zip codes. I think if we knew why there were the disparities, then it would be a, a quick. So I think it's definitely a multitude of reasons why. Metro Health is focusing efforts to bring pop-up clinics to areas with lower vaccination rates. And zip codes east of the city have generally felt a greater impact from COVID-19. 636, about 44 degrees. And a look at the plans for the Spurs' new environmentally friendly training, training center. That's coming up next. 
640. Welcome back on your Friday morning plans for the future Spurs campus on the northwest side will include a state of the art training facility for the San Antonio Spurs medical and research offices, retail space, also park and community space. It's also going to be a sustainable center. Sarah Costa explains how the nearly 50 acre development plans on being environmentally friendly. Trees, brush, and a paved road with some landscaping. It's what you'll find now where the future Spurs campus will be on the city's northwest side. The development that will house the Spurs training facility, offices, and retail shops is called the Human Performance Campus. It will be located off Loop 1604 and I-10 near the shops at La Cantera and Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. It's a large project, and it aims to protect the environment. They could have um, paved 100% of that area, they could have uh, clear cut all the trees that were there. But through this agreement that we have with them, it will protect the recharge zone. District 7 Councilwoman Anna Sandoval voted in favor of the city approving the campus that is outside of her district because she says the city and the Spurs organization have made an agreement to make the campus more sustainable. That agreement includes pouring a limited amount of concrete, preserving trees, and planning for more green spaces. This will not only help combat storm runoff, but also not exceed the city's tree ordinance. Sandoval says the development also plans on integrating solar and renewable energy into the campus, but at this time, exactly how much has not been determined. It's just the right thing to do, right? But at the end of the day, it actually makes financial sense for the city itself as well as um, our residents. Another way it will be sustainable, the campus will be designed to make it easier for employees or visitors to carpool or use ride shares, which Sandoval says will combat traffic and air pollution. I think that that'll be great, not only, I mean, not only because they're going to have renewable clean energy, but I think it'll be a great model for other projects that come forward. And in fact, I think the city can start using this particular agreement as a model as we go forward with other organizations that come and request funding. On top of having a lot of green space, it's expected to also have the largest dog park in all of Bear County. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And the total cost of the project is an estimated $510.8 million. The City of San Antonio and Bear County are offering the Spurs Sports and Entertainment $32 million in incentives to help create the development. Speaking of our Spurs, you're back in action on the road tonight. They'll be in Orlando to take on the Magic. The Silver and Black currently 2-6 and six and on a two-game losing streak. Hopefully they can get back into the win column tonight. The game is set for 6 o'clock San Antonio time. Things are getting scruffy here on GMSA and around the KSAT newsroom as No Shave November is now in full swing. Stephen Cavazos is leading the campaign and joins us now with an update. Hey, good morning, Stephen. Morning. Good morning. Well, I think we're still where we started just a few minutes ago when we talked about this last, but I think we've been off to a pretty good start here. Uh, five days in, I mean, we've raised over $2,000, so it's really exciting and things are doing pretty well. Donations have been coming in and this is great news as all the money that we have raised goes towards cancer research, treatment and prevention. Now, here's a look at the 15 of us here at the KSAT uh, newsroom who are participating. Now, these pictures were taken on day one and we are already starting to look a little different, I think. As we have been sharing, everyone has a different reason for supporting this great cause. Now, our assistant news director, that's Mario, said, quote, like most, cancer has taken a toll on my family and friends. I'm honored to join the KSAT No Shave team as a first timer to help fund cancer research and prevention and hopefully save lives. I'm asking for your support in helping the national LGBT LGBT Cancer Network, which helps educate the, the LGBTQIA community about increased cancer risk and the importance of early detection. Their goal is to create a world where every person with cancer is treated with dignity throughout their treatment. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what Steve Spreester had to say. He says, I grow the beard each year in memory of my Uncle Terry, who died from cancer way too young. By the time he found out he had colon cancer, it was too late. The beard is also a reminder that all the men, uh, all the men need to take care of ourselves and get regular checkups. It's also a visible way to fight cancer. Now you can read more from all our guys on our website. Just head to ksat.com slash no save there. You will find plenty of information as well as a link to donate to Team KSAT. And as we've said, money is already starting to pour in. So far we have over $2,600, so just a few hundred dollars shy of 3,000. But again, keep in mind our goal is 10,000. Now let's get a quick look at the roadways. There is a lot of issues out there this morning. A big stretch of traffic right here off Loop 410 at State Highway 151 
We told you about this a little bit earlier this morning where we do have traffic that looks like it's at a standstill right now. That is because a crash here is causing some big issues. There is a different shot where first responders are on the scene. It looks like they have a few road flares that are set up right now. Uh, we're going to work to bring you more information, but it does look like this could be a big issue throughout the morning as more folks get out there. Now we did have a stall that looks like it just cleared though from Loop 410 eastbound at Babcock, but that's not the issue that I'm concerned about right now. It's going to be right here off Loop 410 southbound at Marbach Road. Again, that traffic is just stretching in those lanes, not looking pretty this morning. As we take a wider look at the map, uh, you're going to want to be very careful out there. Jonathan Gotha was actually heading through that direction before he got some caught in some of that mess. So we'll continue to check in with him, find out exactly what's going on out there off Loop 410, but it does look like it is a pretty big mess. Inbound times didn't mean to throw that in there, but thankfully that is to green across the board. I think we all need some silver lining after seeing this mess right now. We'll continue to track this problem again throughout the morning, guys. All right, and a tip of the hat to Stephen Cavazos for working hard on our yes. No Shave November efforts for the whole team. Thank Proud you, Proud to be a part of doing this with you guys. Thank yes. you, sir. Thanks for leading the campaign. Hello, sunshine. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That. Oh, yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, beautiful picture. The sunset in Wilson County from a couple of days ago. Sunrise is going to be beautiful here in town. No glow of it as of yet. We're still uh, kind of pushing things still about an hour before the sun pops over the horizon. Uh, 43 here in town. That's the coldest temperature since way back uh, about the late uh, about the third week of March. And we've got some 50s out to the west of us. And usually it's much, much cooler out in portions of the hill country. But there's more of a cloud cover out in the hill country. So these temperatures are staying in the 50s, uh, low to mid 50s, about 10 10, 15 degrees warmer thanks to the clouds out there. High temperature yesterday, 56 degrees. That was the coldest temperature, coldest high temperature since going back to mid-February. And everybody stayed on the chilly side with all those clouds out there. Add about 10 to that today. So folks are going to be well up into the 60s. Still about 10 below normal. I don't think anybody's complaining about that. And one thing for sure, it is going to cool off very quickly tonight because we've got this really dry air, which does not hold the heat in very well. And then it warms up very, very quickly. Now, as we go into the weekend, it's still going to be fantastic. By next week, though, with the extra humidity, it's going to start to warm up a little bit more. We're not going to be as chilly in the morning because, again, you can't drop down below what these uh, dew point temperatures are. So here's what's going on. Upper level steering winds. We've got the nice northwesterly flow right now, and high pressure is going to start to build back in here. So what that's going to do is we gradually see temperatures go up and that's going to be the case, especially going into late Sunday and then the first part of next week. And that's just going to sort of stay in control. Now, one thing, though, we are going to have, even though the highs kind of hanging around here, we'll have more of a flow coming in off the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico and down here at the surface. So we are going to see uh, not only a little bit higher humidity, but also some more clouds hanging around here, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll see this little bit of a disturbance kind of moving on through, but probably won't even squeeze out any showers. Then by the latter part of the week, we're going to start to see a much more pronounced trough up there to the uh, north, right around the, the Great Lakes and the mid uh, northern uh, Ohio Valley or northern Mississippi Valley, pardon me. And this is going to pull down a much more substantial front. Sometime it looks like maybe mid to latter part of the day on Friday of next week. So the forecast today, Fantastic. Got some clouds out to the west. Otherwise, plenty of sunshine. 60 and that's going to be the noontime temperature. We'll get up to 66. Still, like I said, below normal. Maybe, uh, you know, sweater, sweatshirt, light jacket all day long and then definitely take one if you're heading to a game tonight because it's going to get really nippy very quick. 70 tomorrow after starting off in the mid 40s. 50 Sunday morning up to 75. Then not quite as cool. Still jacket weather in the mornings next week, but we'll make it up in the upper 70s, close to 80 much of next week. Wow. Just wow. Great weekend. Yeah, yeah. Just fantastic. This sticks up the thank yous that people are giving you I, yeah, for the weather. Thank you very much. Yeah. Accol accolades, compliments, gratuities. You're good with all of them. I was going to say, should I ask for donations? <laughs> <laughs> well, to your No Shave account. Don't, donate to No Shave. Yeah, there you go. Great hair folks stick together. <laughs> Right now it is 649, about 44 degrees. And November is Diabetes Awareness Month. It's a disease many are diagnosed with every day, but how much do you know about it? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're gonna show you some of the early warning signs. Outside with live cam, let's check on the morning sunrise. Nope, still in bed, still has the covers pulled up. We understand why. It's a beautiful morning out there, nice and cool. You're watching GMSA, thanks for starting your day with us.
up here on GMA, we will talk about more ways to green your home. But of course, our big headline this morning, the vaccine, the growing opposition to the federal vaccine mandate deadline for businesses facing potential legal action from 26 states. We'll talk about the backlash this morning. You'll see that and more coming up right here on GMA. We know that vaccines absolutely save lives and we know that mandates work. And now the federal government's mandates have a deadline. People who work with companies that have 100 or more employees, certain health care workers and federal contractors will need to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by January 4th. People with big companies will have the option of wearing masks and getting tested every week. And what we want to do is prevent other deaths. And how do we do it? Making sure that workplaces are safe. But pushback is building. Louisiana, Indiana, and Mississippi just filed a lawsuit against the Biden administration Thursday, saying the mandates constitute federal overreach and risk negatively impacting the workforce. The attorney general in Florida says she will legally challenge the mandate for large companies. In South Carolina, Governor Henry McMaster issued an executive order prohibiting state agencies from requiring employees to get vaccinated. The state is one of a long list of states that have already filed lawsuits against the administration. And at least 40 Senate Republicans say they plan to challenge the mandates using the Congressional Review Act. But the White House is standing its ground. Why are they getting in the way of trying to protect and save lives? That's all we're trying to do. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And we do have an update from the Textile website. They have listed this portion of 410 is closed off at this hour as first responders remain on the scene working to clear this crash. Now, we still have not gotten any information at this time, but Jonathan Goto is has just arrived there and will work to bring us all the updates throughout the morning. But obviously, this is leading to a huge mess there. Uh, we had rid of that stall that just cleared out, but this is going to be the big issue there. A Loop 410 southbound right at Marbach Road. You can see that traffic is stretching that far back in those southbound lanes, so it's not looking good, especially with the highway closed off at this hour. This could be a big, big issue as more people get out there. And as we take a wider look at the map, we are all already starting to see some of those congestion spots building up there, Mike. So hopefully people take it easy out on the roads this morning. Thank you very much, sir. Just saw a uh, Southwest jet landing from uh right to left on your screen there heading up to the uh, kind of northwest beautiful flying weather this morning as well as most of the day 43 here in town 39 in Helotus 38 Balverde and Gorgeous day, 60 at noon, 66 for a high temperature today. Weekend, make some outdoor plants. Open up the windows. Not in the overnight, though, because it's going to be really cold <laughs> tomorrow morning, Definitely. 44 degrees. We get up to 70, though, tomorrow, 75 on Sunday. Of course, set your clocks back, yay, before you go to bed Saturday night and a little warmer, more humid next week. But the weekend just perfect. And thanks to everybody who's donated to yes, No Shave November yes. this week. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Happy Friday, and we'll see you back here at 9.